Hi, welcome to TEC2. I'm Dave Herman with Tech Support. Today we're going to be going over the setup switches on the Infinity and Evolution furnaces. If you have an Infinity Evolution furnace and you have an Infinity Control or Evolution Control, you won't need to do any setup with the switches on the furnaces because the control will do all that for you. But in the situation that you don't have that control, you will need to do a setup with the switches on the furnace. So that's what we'll go over today. Now we're in the control compartment of the furnace, working with the board. On the Infinity Evolution units, if you have the Evolution Control or the Infinity Control, none of the dip switches will need to be set on them. Your first setup switch, SW1, which is going to be on the top side, top left-hand corner of the board, you're going to have, on there, you're going to have eight switches. It's going to be one through eight. Uh, number one is going to be on the inside, which will be to your right. So on the inside to the right will be number one. When the board comes out from the factory, they will be factory set for operation. So unless you go to make changes to the, the setup on the unit, you won't have to make any changes, but it will be ready for operation. On this one, SW1, number one. Switch one, number one is the status code recovery. So that would be turned on if you wanted to recover any status codes that were happening with the unit. So that is strictly a status code recovery. That switch has to be off. That is the normal position for operation turned on if you wanted to recover status codes, previous status codes. Moving to the left would be switch two. That would be an adaptive mode, low heat only, adaptive mode switch. That is a switch that would be used if you were going to have a single or two stage stat. Depending on what you had to do would be the, where the switch position would have to be. If SW1 number two is off, it allows two stage operation with a single stage thermostat. If it is on, that would mean you would have a two-stage thermostat. So you would have to have that on for a two-stage thermostat, off for a single-stage thermostat. Okay, moving to the left, switch one, number four, the comfort efficiency adjustment. Normal position is on. When the switch is in the on position, it's going to decrease the low heat airflow by approximately 7% when the switch is turned off, it will increase the airflow. So the difference there is the comfort efficiency adjustment on is going to decrease the airflow, off is going to increase the airflow. Moving on to the next, SW1 number five, the CFM per ton adjustment. It's going to come in the off position, off position, for the factory setting is 350 CFM per ton. So that is the off position for 350 CFM per ton. If you did turn that switch to on, it would be 400 CFM per ton. Moving to the next switch, SW1 number six, this component self-test. That is gonna be a switch that is normally off. If you turn that switch to on, it's going to initiate the component self-test, and that would be for troubleshooting. When that is on, it's going to run the system through a check for all the components to see what is operational and where there may be an issue. Moving to switch one number seven and switch one number eight, that's a blower off delay. The blower off delay, combination of how those switches are turned, are gonna adjust the timing of the blower off after a cycle between 90 seconds and 180 seconds. For that, you'll refer to the CFM adjustment table to get the specific timing, depending on how the switches are set. The next switch we're gonna go to is switch four. There's three setup switches on switch four. The first one is not going to be used, so the normal position on that will be off. And switch four is to the far right, about center of the board towards the top. Switch four, number two, 
off as a normal position, that's going to be used in conjunction with a switch number one, number two. So switch number one, number two, and switch four, number two, our off allows the modulating operation with a single stage thermostat. Turned on switch number four, number two, when using a two stage thermostat to allow intermediate heat operation when R to W1 is closed. Switch number two on number four, working with switch one, number two. And then moving on to switch four, number three, that is CFM uh, per ton adjustment switch. And that's gonna work with, along with switch one, number five. That allows additional CFM per ton adjustment when used with number five, switch one. Switch four, those switches do work together with switch number one. As far as the CFM per ton adjustment used, the combination of those switches will depend on the amount of CFM per ton that are allowed from 325 CFM per ton to 400 CFM per ton. And we are showing the chart for that now. And then the remaining setup switches that we have, SW2 and SW3. SW2 located on the outside of the board right here. And SW3 on the inside of SW2. Those are strictly for airflow. SW2 is your AC airflow, and SW3 is your fan, circulating fan airflow. Those adjustments are made, those switches, per the charts provided by the factory that we are showing now. Okay, I hope that helped with the setup switches on the Infinity Evolution furnaces. Remember, it's always easier to have the evolution control or infinity control on that because that'll help you avoid doing any kind of setup. The control will do everything for the furnace. All your setup can be done through that infinity or evolution control. But if you do not have that control, once again, you have to go back and do all your setup through those switches on the furnace to make sure you have the best possible operation. Thanks for watching.